Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen show. We're very happy. I'm always excited about this one because it's going to be a great show today. Uh, Canada Beef is back in the house. We have Chef Matthew and Duane from Canada Beef. And guys, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Jay. There Good you to be right? here. Good to be here, here, Jay. I was going to say, look at that background, hey? Eh? Yeah, welcome to the Center of Excellence. I think that's an Alberta field. I tell you, it looks like down by Claire's home. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. West to Claire's home, down there. My favorite place. Awesome. Well, guys, what is on the works today? I got the big list here of all the great things we're doing. But, Chef, do you want to just kind of give us a little update of what we're going to be looking at today? Totally. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, what we're here for today, in fact, is to look at some cuts, uh, some cuts of Canadian beef. And, and how we can work those cuts into seasonal menus that are just a perfect fit for fall and for winter. And uh, I guess the inspiration from, for this uh, episode today, I was on a long weekend trip with my family. And, uh, and so I was, of course, doing some cooking for the family. And I was asking them around, you know, so what, what do you guys want to have? And I had some ideas in terms of what we could eat. And I offered up steaks. And everybody's like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And then when I offered up, like stew, phrases, you know, like <laughs> spice and slow cooking. And everybody went, yeah, 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 absolutely. That's something that people have a hard time doing at home. And I think, you know, an awesome opportunity for the restaurant restaurateurs out there to share some, share some of that expertise, their, their technique, their understanding of cuts and, and which cuts perform best for those applications. And then ultimately offer something that is, uh, you know, to offer pleasure to the guest and that they're going to find enjoyment with, and also uh, for the operator to make some money in terms of um, profitability with stews and braises. So that's what we're aiming to uh, to showcase here today, and we're going to look at it uh, a few a few ways. And in terms of opportunity, we talked about seasonal, um, and now nowadays there's a there's a huge appreciation for like spice and exotic, and that you know that younger clientele that's coming out that. Uh, exciting, like wow flavors, big and bold, and, and spices and stuff. So, so what the, the challenge in that is how do we make uh, that food, which is actually from far away in terms of that inspiration, the techniques, the spicing, and those exotics, and bring it into local context so we can say we've got great local ingredients on our menu, showcase here, uh, and in the in the format in the package that you want to eat, which is big, bold, spicy, and wow exotic. So Canadian beef comes to mind in this case. And so we're going to look at here just uh, a couple of cuts. We've got three on the counter. We're going to talk about other ones that would work well for these kinds of applications. Uh, the, the basics in terms of, of those cooking techniques to, to prepare it in advance for food service, uh, for a la carte style dining. And in that, also because of some of the challenges around capacity, and as we see a transition into indoor spaces and the opportunity that exists to deliver awesome tasting, hot, juicy, tender, moist, and delicious Canadian beef preparations that, that work well for that takeout, that pickup, that curbside service offering that is really so important these days. Hey, Chef, I have a question for you. You mentioned different spices and different you know products into stews and into braising and things like that is that something that we traditionally saw before because i just remember stew in my family was huge when i was raised it was every sunday we we're going to grandma's having stew and it was always the same flavors but is that shifting now just with the generations oh i'd say for sure yeah uh, the, the concept is is the same and then there's an efficiency in that big batch cooking that your grandma's wisdom brought to the table. And so our traditional stew flavors, those, you know, those nice deep roasted beefy flavors, yeah. that thick sort of brothy jus, the root vegetables that come with the season. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, my grandma's stew and your grandma's stew, probably somewhat different, but you know, essentially the same, that Canadian, Canadian kind of um, um, standard. But nowadays, you know, that same technique, the same technique applies for these exotics from, from Indian, uh, influence from Southeast Asian. Um, uh, we're going to look at Thai. We're going to look at Middle Eastern, North African, and and essentially how versatile Canadian beef is in these applications. Um, and with cuts that are lesser known, 
and and provide or, or have a great potential for profitability in the restaurant. Yeah, I, um, potatoes, carrots, lots of salt. <laughs> That's grandma's recipe, right? The, you got lucky yeah. if you got an onion, but uh, it was yeah. uh, I, I, you bring him back a lot of memories. I tell you, chef. Um, yeah, and it's and it's all about the ingredients, quality of ingredients. My my grandma's stew. It was it was very brothy, very very thin and, and liquidy. Not that super like rich thickened stew. It's like a, it's a French Canadian style. It's called bouilli, and it's really just like it's pole food kind of. It's it's like a braised beef knuckle, big chunk of beef uh, cooked in there slow, and then right at the end, you know, with her perfect timing, she'd bring in the the potatoes and the carrots and cabbage and green beans and pull it all out and serve it up, and uh, and we were delighted. So so yeah. there is, you know, there's there's that clientele that wants. Uh, some of that more traditional type flavor that they love. Um, they are also interested in seeing beef on the menu and they want it in a affordable uh, package. And so uh, the stews and braises, I think really are going to, are going to make the mark here in terms of, uh, of fall winter dining. And, and like I mentioned before, the beauty that, that these offer is, you know, whereas the, there is challenges in delivering like, you know, a, a curbside or pickup steak uh, program. No doubt. These hold up super well. You can transport them. You can reheat them when you get them home. You can reheat them again the next day uh, when you take them to the office for your lunch. So tons of versatility in this uh, and loads of flavor. And I would say even loads of fun in terms of color composition and delivering uh, you know, high quality product. Another thing that is uh, an opportunity right now is, is right now we're probably seeing more, more than ever uh, products in the beef category that have been developed uh, for reduced labor in the back of house. And so you're gonna see uh, more and more products that have been um, further worked to provide opportunity for the, for the restaurateur to really you know, go to work quickly, uh, reduce or eliminate any uh, unusable trim in their shops. And, and our partners in the, in the packing industry are, are, are finding really great ways to deliver those products um, and just further finish, further refine, so that so that the chefs and the and the and the butchers in the in the restaurants, or the young cooks that are being trained in those restaurants, have an easy time processing, uh, with little or zero waste. So cool. Yeah. Um, I just, so you just there's so many memories. Now I, I was just trying to look on the food timeline here, but um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that this was a big part um, why our grandparents and and parents might be using stews. Was all you know? Obviously, after the World War II, where we're rationing a lot of foods and a lot of different things, and I think we were also getting accustomed to preserved foods and cans after the World War II. That having a stew for a supper where the family got together was like a del delicacy, right? Like it was something very special, and I, that's why I think, like, for my grandparents, of having a Sunday supper together and having stew. Um, is, is something like I think there was something amazing there that people may be able to pull into this time together, this fall and winter on these ideas mm -hmm. for takeout or doing it themselves. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Love this, love this topic. And the and the the, the shareable, uh, you know, family style uh, uh, plate ups that we can do with with these um, with these preparations. And you know, there is there is also like you know the idea that of stew and we. Like you mentioned, we have we recognize stew, brown, beefy root vegetables. But when you look at the range of stews and the influence of those kinds of um, slow cooking, uh, stewing, or braising from those you know exotic cultures, um, you know there's there's also a ton of awesome products that have been uh, super well developed uh, for food service convenience products that are that are authentic in flavor, um, color, smell, rich in spices, and there's lots of stuff out there these days uh, so in terms of you know expertise from the indian kitchen or from uh, southeast asian cultures uh, you can actually replicate uh, pre quite precisely these authentic preparations uh, without having to build these sauces from scratch uh, for the folks out there who are going at it from scratch power to them uh, because they're going to have something that's going to be you know ultra exquisite but uh, but definitely check into the availability of these products to help out uh, your your business and and uh, doing volume of business. I was you know, thinking about, these are challenging times, no doubt. We have, uh, you know, I, 
uh, just coming to work this morning. I was, you know, having a, a discussion with my wife, but, you know, and I was like, I got to go. Um, but when you think about these time saving measures, you know, whether they're for your, for your home, um, for the, for the professional kitchen, uh, for the person who wants to dial up and, and order some food and, and receive it quickly, whether they're picking it up, getting it delivered or, or sitting down in a restaurant to enjoy it. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of great things to be said about that efficiency uh, in terms of our ability to deliver something, you know, delicious and consistent and, uh, and that people can enjoy and then, you know, get on with their busy lives. So we're going to look at three, uh, three preparations. I think we got a bit of a timeout, Jay. Are we off? You see anything there? You good? You're gonna keep going. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, Sorry. No problem. What? First time in seventy shows that's ever happened. So, Woo! you're lucky. <laughs> so, uh, so what's happening is uh, we're gonna look at these these cuts. We're gonna look at how we've we've prepared them uh, for mise en place for for food service operation. Uh, how to plate them up for in 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 house dining, and then also how to make them available for uh, takeout um, takeaway options, uh, which are going to be super popular. And this these types of cuts, you know, they're just they're just made for it. So I'll go uh, if you guys want. I'll I'll introduce some of these cuts that may be a little bit more unusual. Slide over here. I got something to show you here for for the audience. You see that? Okay, we're good. Yeah, we've got three cuts here. Essentially, um, starting on the back row, the brisket. We've talked uh, a bit about brisket in in previous episodes, and our approach with brisket uh, last time was essentially to show the dry heat cooking methods that were possible, along with some of those those stewing, those uh, braising uh, methods as well. But um, but here, awesome opportunity with brisket. Brisket braises up super nice, uh, you know, with a minimal amount of trimming to reduce a bit of the fat, perhaps. Uh, you know, you're getting a, a really awesome yield and brisket. It cooks tender and delicious. The, the little bit of extra fat in that cut helps make it more juicy, uh, makes it, uh, you know, help it withstand some of that, that reheating uh, that uh, that's necessary after you've, you've mise en place your braised items. Uh, you can portion it out uh, and, and re-therm it for service. Uh, brisket, awesome for braising. If you, you know, if you enjoy Chinese food or other Asian uh, foods, they use a lot of brisket. Uh, in this manner as a, as a braised item. And it's because, I mean, they have, they're super efficient in their kitchens and the, the briskets are go-to for, for braised dishes, uh, whether that, that product is going into a braised, like a, a stir fry, uh, sorry, like a stew or a, a stir fry that is more like on the curry side or in soups and broths for, uh, for uh, Vietnamese style, pho, that kind of stuff. Um, brisket's a great choice. And some operations might already have brisket on their menus. And so to, let's say, uh, you know, take a certain percentage of it, uh, dedicate that to your, your, uh, your, your braising, your stew options. Maybe you're doing some smoking. You can smoke your deckle side uh, and braise your flat side. This is the, one of the preferred parts for the, for the smoking industry, for the smokers uh, out there. Here, perfect for making uh, stew beef um, braised style. A couple other cuts here that are perhaps a little bit less familiar. We've got uh, this one. Anybody uh, in the audience there? Want to take a guess at uh, what we're looking at? Jay, Dwayne, audience members. Come on, Dwayne. Let's see how good you are. There we go. Digital muscle. Digital muscle. Bingo, Dwayne. You <laughs> got, you, got you in here for a reason. No so pressure. Dwayne, you no identified the, uh, the digital muscle here. Um, it's, you know, this is actually relatively easy to identify because you've got, you know, what is absolutely beautiful connective tissue here. You've got a nice piece of tendon there uh, for folks who enjoy going to Vietnamese restaurants. That's probably my favorite part on the Vietnamese the soup menu, uh, some of that yummy tendon. So that's braised or, or uh, stewed as well. Um, so that, that connective tissue here where, so if we were making steaks out of these to, to grill, to sear, um, that would be, you know, kind of an enemy. But in, when it comes to braising applications, you know, that's where that, that lovely connective tissue is going to dissolve through the cooking process. It's going to bring richness, mouthfeel to your broth or your, to your stews. So that is your friend for sure. Uh, digital muscle, pretty widely available. Um, you know, if, if you're um, just speak with your, your favorite food service uh, supplier uh, and, uh, and check this out. Uh, also, in terms of yield, there's no bone in this. Uh, a little bit of connective tissue, not much for 
uh, for fat, but uh, full of flavor. Uh, in terms of its character, this is a muscle that comes from the lower part of the shank. So it's, it's a really, um, a really strong, a really dense muscle with that connective tissue running through it. So you've got awesome flavor uh, from that strong working muscle uh, of the Canadian beef. Big, big piece of meat. Yeah, beautiful. This is actually like several, I'd say that's probably like six in there. Uh, oh, so okay. it's, it's, a, it's a little muscle that goes right down near the, uh, right down near the heel. Oh, okay, I see now. Yeah. It's derived from the hip, and to Matthew's point, uh, it's a, when Matthew takes it out and gives you, shows you an example, you'll see it's about the size of a pork tenderloin, or the, oh, terrace, okay. the terrace major, for example, uh, if you're familiar with that from the front, uh, from the front shoulder. So um, um, uh, a little bit of trimming, it, it does eventually connect to the bone. As Matthew had mentioned, there's a, a, a real... Um, um, uh, a, a strong piece at, at, at one of the ends. But um, when Matthew got, kind of goes through the next, uh, uh, the next package, I think I know what it is from, from far right. away. But, uh, but um, we'll talk a little bit about those muscles. I think that is inner, uh, is it intercostal finger meat? Yes, yes, Duane, good job. <laughs> yeah, that's the intercostal <laughs> finger meat. So uh, the intercostal, um, is essentially means between the ribs. And so this is like beautiful, full flavor uh, from, that, from that prime rib, uh, in, in essentially cut from between those ribs. And so that, that yummy, delicious rib flavor, uh, lovely connective tissue on this also, you know, very little uh, trimming of fat required. And in fact, you know, the fat brings lovely quality of flavor also to it. Uh, it's awesome in stews. It's actually quite quite uh, impressive in terms of a, a dry heat cooking method. Uh, you can cut this quite thinly, uh, skewer it, uh, marinate and grill, and it's absolute uh, super versatile cut. And, uh, and I would say, you know, relatively underutilized in the professional kitchen for food service. Uh, so if we can bring something that's, that's unusual, unique, uh, delicious, flavorful uh, to the table, you get recognition from your customer going that extra mile to help uh, find something that is, that is new that they can talk about or maybe try it home later. So, Dwayne, that goes between the ribs. Am I right? Like, yeah. Um, so, when the um, the the harvesting facility is deciding on bone in or boneless prime rib, there's mm -hmm. inter the meat in between. Um, they all peel out that meat, and um, and you'll get your bone bone in uh, beef back ribs, and then you'll get your intercostal meat. So the only time you uh, that, that product is available pretty much is when they're making a boneless product, a boneless um, ribeye, zero by zero, two by two ribeye, and then they can pull out that intercostal meat. Uh, what's interesting about the three um, cuts that Chef Matthew has chosen today is that they, they are different, uh, very different. And so as, as the operator is looking at their at their offering and that, that fits within that, that food service um, genre. The, the prime, uh, sorry, the, uh, um, uh, the brisket, um, we're somewhat familiar is with a, a fairly solid piece of meat, not much connective tissue uh, within it. That's gonna produce a pretty, a fairly lean um, meat product. Uh, many of the operators may use a hip or a chuck today who do use that type of a product. And those products are conducive, as Chef Matthew said, had mentioned for, for longer cooking. But the next two he spoke about, they are quite unique. And the, the, um, the, um, the digital muscle is, 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 is more tendon than it is meat. And when that product is cooked, it's more of a, it jellifies, it's more of a jelly, the, the, the bite, the feel, the chew is, it, it's, it's tender, but it's yeah. very gelaty. If we were to put that in for a hamburger, it'd be like eating erasers. You and and, gr and yeah. grilling it with a hamburger, you would you would never you'd never you'd never be able to grind it down to a palatable state. But in the proper cooking method, it is almost it, it is like a like a like jellified. The finger meat, on the other hand, and so you'll have individuals who I love to have that bone on the rib. Uh, that's the best part of the rib. Well, yeah, that's yeah, the best. Mom. That's the best part of the rib. Oh, did we lose Dwayne now? People who want to uh, have uh, enjoy that that bone-in experience, and so Chef Matthews put together three um, 
items that are, um, are, are going to be utilized in, in cooking method of similar, but they're three very different uh, items. Very cool. Yeah, totally cool. Dwayne, thanks for that. You know, I, I was one thing that we did that was really cool, actually. Maybe we'll bring it back to the show here sometime. Uh, uh, we did it in a presentation to some young chefs who, were, or who came here to the center. Um, that was back last summer. But what we did with this, the digital muscle, and Dwayne mentioned I should pull any of these out, so I'm going to. Um, and, uh, and I'll just show you a little bit closer up. But So the digital. So what we did with this one, and, you know, the cooking methods, as Dwayne is, is mentioning here, is you've got a lot of different options. But, you know, you can see there's just beautiful connective tissue. This is, this, you know, this requires essentially no trimming because in the cooking method, uh, this is going to dissolve through that wet heat cooking. You know, you've got a nice piece of that, that nice gelatiny uh, tendon there yeah. as well. That'll also dissolve. Maybe later you can pick that out, you know, if it's not something that you want to put in on your finished presentation. But all this is going to dissolve. There's a, there's a really unique kind of like a membrane uh, t texture on the inside that if you cut through it. Um, but it doesn't, it's not really apparent unless you really do a cross cut um, to, uh, to show it off. But it looks really cool. Like Asian cuisine, they'll, they'll actually eat this more of on a dry heat or a very uh, quick heat cooking. Uh, and because they appreciate that crunchiness of that tendon, I guess like I do too. But what we did at one point, we actually, we cooked this right to soft. I think we did it for... 48 hours at about 60, 65 degrees uh, Celsius in, in a sous vide, um, cooking in plastic um, in, the, in a combi oven. What we ended up with was essentially a, a beautiful, a solid shape and uh, nicely seasoned. We put it out onto a platter and then sort of like in a table side presentation or a bit of a wow, we actually took like a, a palette knife and just like spread it like a, like a confit of beef. And so all that beautiful like gelatin was all in there loaded up. Um, and I I think we finished it with a little drizzle of beef fat and a bit of a mustard with some parsley. And it was just like eating a charcuterie, like freshly cooked. And it just made like a beautiful pate and it was just super rich and delicious. And it was just super wow. So that was, that was the digital. Uh, Ma the Matthew. Yes, sir. Could, well, could you, could you slice one of those digitals in half just to show what, what yeah. it looks like? It is such a, uh, the, uh, the connective tissue and, 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 and you'll see a, and uh, an, uh, an, an expectation that there's meat there, there, there is very little meat. It is connective tissue. But to Chef Matthew's comment there, it, it really offers a, a, a different type of a chew flavor, mouth flavor, and mouth feel. Oh, it's, it, it's unique. That's really cool, Dwayne. Yeah. Once it, Are once we it, always roughly that size, Chef? This is pretty typical, I would say, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty. They're actually really consistent in their in their size and shape. But these, you know, you could you could stew this or you know braise it as a larger piece. But there's that, you know, that I would say that you know, at once you cook it out, all that that connective tissue. Oh, look at that camera guy is just on it with the lighting. So so that beautiful connective tissue, it just dissolves. It it melts. It it melts in the cooking and then it melts in your mouth again later because it becomes part of that broth. It just Absolutely beautiful cut. I see um, so many appetizer ideas right there, chef, with that product. Totally. You just need to handle it, uh, you know, well in, in advance. You can braise it nice and easy and cook it. Uh, you can you can slice this for like what we've done with it is like a, a unusual sandwich, you know. So we'll oh, make a yeah. beautiful beef sandwich with this stuff, all cooked up in advance and then cold sliced, almost like a charcuterie. So uh, just yeah. tons of potential on those ones. Uh, the intercostal, a little closer up. Look here too. So these are really neat as well. Basically cut from between the ribs. All right, that makes more sense. I was trying to figure out what kind of so cows you had that. If, if, yeah, if you want to put if you want to put one um, opposite to Matthew, one on the, the on the interior, and there we go. So if, if go. Cam, yep, um, yep, that's fine. Yep, and then one whatever, and then one. So if Cameron can kind of get a little bit closer, we'll just show the difference between uh, the sides. So Cameron, yeah, that's perfect. Thanks. On, I think it's the left side. Th that is that piece is the interior that's closer to the to the uh, digital muscle. So that's mm -hmm. on the inside. That's on the inside of the carcass. 
The next two on the on the left side, that would be next to the uh, lip on ribeye. That, that, that's where you've removed the lip. Yeah, so that's the interior. The external is where they, um, uh, at the harvesting facility, they've separated, uh, peeled off those back ribs. So that, that's the meaty side. That's the the inner side of the uh, of the carcass. So would this have similar fl flavor profiles or or bite as a rib as a beef rib? Then uh, it, it it is. If you take a look, maybe on the middle one, you can kind of yeah. see it's on an angle a little bit, and you can yeah. see. Look at the fat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. That is, that's the, you know, when people say, I love the bone in, well, it's not so much the bone in is really, it's this intercostal meat and the flavor and the juiciness that you yeah. can, you can see on the one that's next to the digital as well on how much um, marbling and intercostal uh, fat that's running through that. That's that juiciness and flavor that people just desire. And it's tender. And you have no rib. And you have no rib. <laughs> you have no rib. Yeah, we've we've worked it. Uh, you know, you could you could cut it up into two chunks. Uh, you can, like I mentioned, you know, cut it thin, uh, grill it. You know, you know more and more. Like I think our, an important part of what we need to do in our work as chefs and, and and hospitality folks is is introduce people to cuts, introduce them to textures, uh, flavors. You know, help them to understand that not every cut of beef is like tenderloin, and it's going to melt in your mouth. Yeah. It performs differently. It offers different flavor profiles, different textures, and and prepare them for that, and and kind of prepare them for their their journey, this exploration that they're going to go on. I think people these days are, you know, they they are generally kind of cooped up. Uh, they're enclosed in their bubble with their family and and their and uh, and their colleagues at work. So you know, to to give them an adventure on a plate, uh, to take them somewhere in terms of what you've prepared for them, introduce them to a new a new cut of beef, uh, mm -hmm. and remind them about the you know, the local sourcing of the product. This is so important because, you know, when, when we introduce these Asian cuisines or these exotics, you know, we often forget to mention that, that we are proudly um, supporting Canadian beef producers. Uh, we are choosing local products that support our local economies. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it's, it's not just beef. It is uh, world-class in its standards in terms of, of from where it's grown, uh, the environment that we have, uh, the, the, the dedication to the quality in, in the process, and then, you know, and for, the, for the chefs or, you know, even before that, but we get into food service, the knowledge that the food service representative uh, imparts to the, to, the, to the chef, to the operator, to the, to the chef operator uh, proudly prepares and presents Canadian beef on their menus. So that, that whole value, that whole value build of the, of the selection, of the sourcing, of the incorporation into the dishes, always remember to remind people we choose Canadian beef. It's beautiful. All right. I'm, I'm excited to see what you're going to do. Right on. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just put these cold cuts uh, away for the moment, and then I'm going to get ready to, to uh, introduce uh, the next steps, which is our, our cooked food product. So uh, just give me one sec. I'll let you guys uh, talk amongst yourselves. I mean, Dwayne can talk for months. So, Dwayne, does, um, that might, those plants are going to be like, very cost-effective then for operators. Is it not a traditional center of the plate kind of dish that we always see on menus? Is that right? Yeah, Chef had mentioned a little bit about ethnic cuisines. Um, the digital muscle, the intercostal muscle, uh, pectoral muscle is, is a, another, another cut. Uh, okay. Highly desired by our Asian uh, cl uh, clients here in Canada and abroad. And it's, it's, it's a bit difficult for us to, ex not difficult, uh, it's it's a very within that large carcass. You can see they're very small little pieces. So mm -hmm. um, to put together like a truckload to, uh, or a container load to ship it across to 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 Asia, you've got to put away a lot of product for a while. Yeah. Um, so here in Canada, uh, with our vibrant ethnic communities and Asian communities, generally speaking, we, they have the opportunity uh, to be able to purchase the product on a regular basis. Um, and being able to, to bring some of their, their, their authenticity of their culture to their restaurants. And this is something that we uh, in the restaurant industry now can sort of uh, work towards also is not only offering that flavor profile, but also um, that authentic cut. Um, uh, strip, um, stir fry, Chef Matthew had mentioned, uh, 
not much stir fry. It uh, does come from the hip, but here in North America, we use a lean piece of meat. So we use strip loin, uh, sorry, for stir fry. We'll use uh, uh, outside rounds and inside rounds. Well, yeah. that product generally will come from a different cut in our Asia uh, ethnic cuisine. Interesting. Now, do you see more and more restaurants even have, like there's a lot of this product here we're seeing today in the market? Is it easy to get? Yeah, it's um, for for more for uh, the, the the provincial or local supply may or may not be util utilizing that product. They may be just grinding that product just out of uh, not not knowing what to do with that item. Oh, wow, uh, really? And yeah, and, and easier it is just to put it into the grinds and and offer it in your lean and uh, uh, offer it out as your lean grind ground. The the larger facilities. Uh, they will segregate that product. They will segregate all those products and they will add the um, appropriate values to those products. But generally speaking, those value, those products are, are of value. They're not the, the highest value in the carcass and they're not the lowest value on the carcass. They're sort of in between. Uh, and when you uh, start to take into consideration some of the seasonality um, uh, opportunities uh, with those products, uh, uh, a building your menu and your limited time offers accordingly will not only differentiate your product, uh, your stew or your stir fry or your dish from your competitor, you'll also be able to take advantage of some price opportunities and build a bit of a higher margin with your, uh, with your offers. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> Anytime the residents can make money and, uh, you know, make some extra money. It's great. Matthew, you're back. Oh, I'm, I'm going to unmute you. There you go, buddy. All right, thanks. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Told, I told you my like biggest secret. Um, so here we go. We uh, we looked at three cuts there. Uh, we looked at the digital, the intercostal, and the brisket. Um, and you know they're all great for braising. There's other cuts too, like you know from the shank that that digital extends up into the shank. Uh, like Dwayne was speaking about, you know, there's some of the uh, leaner cuts from the from the hip that are usable too. Depending on your food service operation, you know, your clientele might be looking for that big, rich, bold, kind of fatty uh, enjoyment like I do. Uh, if you've got a clientele that needs to eat lean for whatever reason, uh, food service operations that uh, cater, in, you know, institutional. If you've got uh, groups that have special uh, diet requirements, lean cuts from the hip are going to work uh, absolutely beautifully. Also, uh, with the leaner cuts, because we're cooking in liquid, the, the, the leaner cuts will... Uh, expel that liquid and then and then pull it back in with the sauce. So you have a, a juiciness, a, a textural uh, quality in that way that that delivers. So it's not fatty, uh, but it is juicy still. Uh, so what we did, uh, oh yeah. So outside of of the shank that we spoke about, uh, the hip, then there's the chuck, and I would say the chuck is probably one of the the you know the great sources of stewing beef of of, of cuts that you can uh, you know have as a as a premium offering and also as more of like a a, a stew or, or, a, or a thinner slice stir fry type. Um, so there's tons of opportunities there as well. No matter which cut you choose, uh, you have opportunities to differentiate within your menus uh, by essentially preparing in, in different ways the cuts. And so what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're preparing them in three different ways for three different menus or three different menu items. And so in this case, we took, you know, let's say if you were to uh, to uh, sort out your products or, you know, if you have uh, multiple applications on your menu for uh, a stewing beef or braising beef, you can, let's say, start with a, you know, like a premium medallion like that, let's say from your, from your chuck or your brisket, a nice individual pot roast. Uh, cooking method is essentially the same, uh, a little bit higher temperature. I think we cook these at about 63 degrees Celsius over a period of time of uh, basically overnight. Um, you can do a traditional method in the oven. Uh, much shorter time, uh, but essentially cooking method is the same. In this case, we made thinner strips, and these are going to be used in our for our stir fry application. We made thicker cubes for more of a uh, a hearty stew. Um, this is going to be like a Middle Eastern style uh, uh, ginger and spice, and uh, and then as I mentioned, a medallion. And we're going to see all these three uh, at work uh, in different applications for in in house dining or for uh, takeaway. So uh, easily mise en place, uh, easily stored, 
Uh, and also, like I was talking about with that uh, leaner cut, if, if it, you know, a leaner cut is going to have a drier uh, texture to it. But if you're to bag it in a liquid like this, then you're reintroducing that moisture and, and picking up that, that, that juiciness from the, your braising liquid. So that's the mise en place. For our menu here, uh, we got a little bit more mise en place. Uh, essentially, we are going to look at three concepts and, uh, and we're gonna finish them all right here uh, a la minute. And uh, starting off with a, a like Middle Eastern uh, inspired dish, uh, a dish that we are gonna use the, uh, those, those larger stewing cubes uh, finished with uh, you know, lots of healthy, yummy grains and, uh, and peas and beans and lentils. And, uh, and here again, opportunities to bring more of that sort of that local flavor, the Canadiana. Uh, Canada is, I think, I'm gonna say it, it's like one of the world's largest producers of lentils. Uh, when I was traveling like, as a young guy in South America, I was down there and, and shopping for you know, local food and stuff. And you go down into the, into the little corner store supermarket in Ecuador and, uh, and you look at the bag of lentils and those are lentils from Canada. And I've heard the same from friends in India. So everybody, everybody all around the world eats Canadian lentils. So incorporating that, you know, another uh, protein to help boost that, that protein, uh, that, that protein offering on a plate uh, and also bring more Canadian along with Canadian beef. It's winter. We're going to look at a, a stir fry and, uh, and also here using some more Canadiana, we're going to, uh, we're going to show it off with, wild rice so we've introduced a little bit of wild rice to our basmati to give it a little bit more toothiness a little bit more earthiness and also that canadian uh, element and that one is going to be that thinner sliced um, curry style and then we're going to look finally at our uh, tr more traditional french a little bit more of that kind of uh, um you know big meaty bold beefy uh, entree type and we're going to set it up in a family style so we've got we've got some stuff warming back here um, first up, our, our stew. This is Middle Eastern style. I've, the, 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 the beauty of this really is the versatility, like I mentioned. And so we've got, you can, you can braise these basically uh, to a, uh, with a certain uh, recipe. So the aromatics that you use, whether you're gonna bring in spices, whether you're gonna bring in fruit juices, um, you know, wine, or and in that flavor profile, then you've got your next opportunity opportunity to introduce um, sort of further refinement and a um, and a, a kind of a definition to the dish. So these were very basically braised, and the efficiency there for the for the food service operator is you can build your basic braise recipe with your favorite beef cut or change your favorite beef cut. The recipe essentially doesn't change, but then you can further modify it later as your menu changes through the season, as your, your chef or your cook come through and have uh, you know really cool ideas, they wanna build a sauce, you take your basic braised beef and then you finish it with a certain sauce. So we're just finishing this one in, and this one I must admit, I did not make it from scratch. I actually cooked it up um, and, uh, and used a convenience sauce, but this like the, the, the sauces that you can get nowadays, the beauty of the, the richness of these flavors, richness of the sauce itself, uh, totally amazing. So you can see that that lovely beef just coats up perfect. Awesome in that. How's it going uh, Going back there? You guys uh, doing okay? You guys are good? No, I'm just, I'm learning. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm taking this in. I'm just, I, always, I love watching you cook. Very, very, very good. You, very might, good. Want to, you might want to check your mic there, um, Jay. Oh, that, that, that's it. That's my cue for Jay to check his mic. Yeah. Okay. So, See, I told you, I told you Dwayne was going to go. So here we are. We've got it in a, uh, we're, we're setting it up here. Um, I went ahead and I just made a, an easy braise. Uh, this is tomato sauce based. Uh, we've got some peppers and some, uh, some, uh, you know, broad beans. And, uh, and tomato, garlic, a little bit of lemon in there, make it a bit Middle Eastern. We put you know, some, a bit of preserved lemon. And, uh, and so we're just gonna take this as our accompaniment here too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plate it up essentially twice. We've got one for 
in-house dining and the versatility here at work for let's say takeout food truck type applications you've got something that is so easy to eat it's all packaged all together i think that's one of the beauties of stew it's not fussy nobody needs to worry about which side of the the plate their knife and fork go and and uh, which knife uh, you know which knife to use there's no need for it it is just pork tender lovely and delicious and here comes that that braised beef in a in a ginger and spice and i think that's actually what they call this sauce it's just ginger and spice so you get you know you get that versatility if you want to further define you know what this ginger and spice mixture is uh, if it's you know something more like a vindaloo you know with a bit of uh, vinegar and a bit of tomato or you know you can you can have this sort of a Maureen? I'm here. <laughs> um, there is. There is. We lost you for one second there, Chef. Oh, okay. I'm back. I'm still here. That looks awesome. And now, now we can dress it up a little bit more, of course. This is where you can get kind of exciting with your, with your creative garnishing. You know, a little bit of fresh tomato here. Jazz it up. Yummy Jeff, how many ounces of beef would you say is on there? This is about a five ounce portion of beef. Yep. Five ounce portion of, uh, we've got some dried fruit. Give it a little bit of Middle Eastern kind of flavor. And you, are right, you are right about Canada being the number one lentil. Is that, you checked it out? Well, I actually did a show last week on it. So. Oh yeah. Um, so <laughs> my, our, our friends at Floating Leaf would be grilling me if I didn't say that you were right. <laughs> Right Amazing, oh, beautiful wild rice. Beautiful. We have beautiful rice. And well, uh, and if you, if, if you're, Jay, you had asked about the portion size. Like that, that, that four, five to six ounces, chef. That that's pretty healthy portion size. That's uh, definitely an Albertan size. Yeah, it's yeah. a generous, uh, a generous portion. I mean, especially if you're close away, you can give a little bit more in terms of size. Yeah, of beef center is in Calgary, right? Yes, <laughs> not a few years though. That's a that's a Calgary portion. It is, and and when you're looking at your food costs, that's what the opportunity really does. Um, it, it places the opportunity back into the operator's hands. Uh, three, four, five ounces. Um, Chef had talked about lentils and the different um, items. Uh, you really have options um, from an operations perspective as it relates to your dish. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Um, yeah, and you know what? There's an interesting, you know, kind of science in terms of if you're if you're incorporating, you know, oh, yeah. leg legumes into your into your into your diet, um, the the iron, the pickup, the the human body's ability to pick up iron is uh, is enhanced when you incorporate um, the, the the vegetable proteins with meat proteins. And uh, and so there's a there's an added benefit there for folks to incorporate a little bit more of that you know beef into their diet along with other healthy um, vegetables or you know and uh, they complement each other. Yeah, Let's that's right. Over, yeah, I just love. Well, first of all, sorry, Dwayne. Go ahead. I was good, uh, just going to just comment on Chef's uh, comments with regards of. Um, of considerations of pairing the protein with the comparable um, 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 side. In this case, a uh, the, the science shows that the efficiency of the body to be able then to digest the protein um, goes up quite a bit. And so, so really understanding that from a pairing perspective of food is also an, an opportunity to ensure that nutritious value is, is being uh, maximized by, by your guest. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The cost right. effective, I just think it like, that is such an inexpensive dish as an operator to create and to sell for a decent price. And I, I just love it. Love it. Yeah. And hearty and, and filling yeah. and filling. And you know, in the winter, in the fall, in the winter, people want to warm up, and uh, and a, a nice spicy stew is just an awesome way to do it. Um, and like you said, opportunity to make some money uh, for the for the operator. 
Next up, we've got the application here, stir fry. Uh, the, you know, the portion cut here that I mentioned, that, that thinner slice, we, we did in fact uh, slice it and then uh, slow cook it to braise it off and then individually bagged it up uh, with that sauce component here. And so in this case, we've got it on the back burner here. You can see those, you can see those smaller pieces all nicely coated in that beautiful mm. curry sauce. It's yummy. It smells delicious. It's going to satisfy folks and you can, you can put this out, uh, you know, quick and, yeah. uh, and it's, and, and, and for takeout option also awesome. So, you know, a, a compliment of a bit of a uh, fresh veg here. We've got some blanched off peppers, uh, you know, these little, little peas of, and, uh, and a quick toss in our sauce. If you like a bit of fruit, we have you know, a little bit of pineapple there. Make it sweet and delicious. Balance off some of that nice spicy sauce here. A quick top to finish. And then for the, uh, for the dine in, And there again, with a little bit of wild rice as a compliment to uh, a lovely basmati. And then we can, you know, get a little bit fancy with the finishing garnishes. Make it spicy, make it sweet and sour. A little bit of a green onion. And uh, here. And a little cilantro because almost everybody loves it. <laughs> Most of the then, just gets beat up every time. Yeah. Yeah. Lantra haters. <laughs> All right. It tastes like soap. I think it's, you know, some people just, it's actually. Yeah, I worked in a restaurant. I lived off of it for I don't know how many years. And I can't, I can't even smell it. And I go, ew. Can't do oh, it. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. killed myself. And so here, oh. a quick little like duet or a duo takeout easy uh, in this, you know, nice recyclable container, super easy, super done. And for takeout too, of course, you know, get a little fussy with the garnishes, make it pretty. A little bit of that. And peppers. And it's all set and ready to roll. That's awesome. awesome. Probably took four minutes from start to finish with your nice mise en place all set up. Uh, super easy, and it's going to satisfy guests. They're going to love it. It's delicious. And it holds really, really well. And uh, it's not an on-demand um, um, product, is it, Chef? And so when, you, when you're thinking about your business and that combination of dine-in and take-out, you have an opportunity, I believe, to meet both genres of, of reaching your customers and your guests uh, without compromising uh, the product. Um, mm -hmm. One can say the longer it sits in the uh, the sauce and the stew, the more flavor it's going to, uh, the more intense flavor it's going to add. So it's a it's a great product for um, for uh, items that are are not on demand um, um, uh, requirements with inside the with inside the operations. Totally, yeah. totally. And you know, not everybody is able to finish a, a you know a restaurant portion of food these days. Uh, and so that little bit that they get to take home or that they can keep, uh, you know, from, from their, from their dish, from their takeout or pickup, uh, they can have that and enjoy the next day. It reheats mm -hmm. really well and they can take it to work and, you know, impress their friends with their delicious smelling, uh, curries or, uh, you know, Middle Eastern style braises. So awesome. Our final, uh, our final preparation here, a little bit more involved, uh, only because we had to kind of close with a, you know, fancy dish. But, um, but, you know, super easy again. Here's our, here's our portion all wrapped up. In this case, we did, you know, give it a good, like, traditional style braise. We browned uh, these medallions. These are from the, the chuck eye. So that, you know, really nice premium part of the, of the chuck. A lot of people don't know that, you know, the chuck offers a really a high quality premium uh, piece of beef uh, right there in the middle in that chuck eye. Um, an extension, essentially, of that, of that rib and that most delicious part of the rib or you know what many would consider absolutely most delicious part is that um is that uh, spinalis the spinalis door size so it's a 
So it's an outer lip on that ribeye. Everybody recognizes it because everybody eats that piece first. Um, that extends into the chuck. So you've got beautiful opportunity to showcase a really cool piece of beef and people are going to be blown away and the price is uh, continues to be attractive. Um, so how do we do it? We're going to, we browned it once, we braised it, and then we uh, bag it in liquid for storage. And also it picks up that yummy uh, jus that we, we cooked up. And then, so what I'm going to do now, so, you know, we're, we've got a restaurant business here. Uh, we've got our, our pre-braised uh, chuck steaks. So these medallions from the chuck eye. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to, we're going to recreate this with a little bit of a, a, a secondary sear. I'm going to get a bit of a, I've got the small pan here to sear with. And I'm going to build a little bit of a, a sauce or like a, an enhanced braising liquid. And so as we get a bit of fire under this, we're going to walk through, you know, some of the important parts about braising. And, uh, and so one of those is to have a nicely seasoned cut of beef. We have a, a pan that's nice and, and nice and hot. So it's going to pick up that, that beautiful sort of searing quality. It's sizzling away there. And we're going to brown them off a little bit just before we get them going in our finished sauce. For the finished sauce, similar process. A little bit of oil here. We're going to take some more aromatics. In this case, we've got some, some tomato sauce. This one for now. We've got a bit of tomato sauce. Um, you know, we can start with shallots and garlic. An important part here, though, is if you're going to use a bit of tomato product, which we'd love to do with this traditional French style braising, you know, my, my go-to is just, you know, give it a nice roast. I, I, and I do this for all, pretty much all applications of, of tomato sauce um, or tomato product paste, because I always give it a nice long roast in the pan, as much as possible, really. And it just develops this, this lovely caramel quality. Um, that roast can fly, it reduces any sort of over acidic flavor profile and brings out sweetness, brings out color. You can see how it like just dresses the bottom of that pan there. And so when we do a little bit of a deep de glass with, with wine, uh, with a little bit of demi glass, so you're just going to pull that beautiful tomato caramel up off, off that pan. And it's just a little touch that, you know, whether you're cooking even in an Indian, in an Indian style or Italian style, you're making usabucos, a little bit of that extra roasting process on tomato product. It just brings out the loveliness of the of the finished dish. So, cool. so is this you said it's a double sear? Is that what you said, Chef? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we seared it once, just prior to doing the braising step, because uh, you can notice they were quite brown. And then we chilled them down, and then we put put them in our mise en place for the pickup for the for the for the service. And then now we're just browning them again to sort of, you know, bring them back. This is a step that, you know, if, you're, if your clientele wants a little bit more of a refined dish, a refined flavor, uh, this, this is great. If you're just focused on doing volume and speed, uh, mm -hmm. this step, you could just bypass it. But, you know, could we're you gonna, use a broiler on that, Chef, too? You could use a broiler, for sure. Yeah, you could use your oven, high temp. Uh, you could do, like, in, uh, in convection, uh, stove top, um, lots of options. Uh, the important part, especially for this dish, though, and just like the tomato product that we roasted, is that you did develop a flavor uh, through that searing process because yeah. that's what people are expecting is that, that richness in, in that beefy flavor. So we've, we've done our, our magic with a, a little bit of tomato product, and we're going to take these over, introduce them to our yummy pan, get some of that tomato in there. We're going to take a little bit of our uh, red wine, Canadian red. Make it more Canadian. Why not tell people, you know, that you, if you're using Canadian wine in your kitchen, you're using it in your uh, in your reduction in your demi glass a little bit there. So that step, deglazing the pan here, pulling that yummy tomato that we uh, that we caramelized on the bottom up, and it's just going to help to to deliver that that juiciness and that yummy flavor to our beautiful chakai medallion. And so that you know, you call them cut by medallions. It's just the shape of the cut, but it's also a pretty attractive word, you know. So it, in terms of the way that, how you describe your menu items, how you how you speak to them, you know, look for the look for the pretty words. Uh, demi glace. We're gonna put a little bit of our reduced demi glace sauce here. Give that a little bit more love in the pan. 
And then that is, uh, I would say, pretty classic French style braising. And it's, you know, it's easy when you do your reheat for service. If you sell, you know, a lot of these, you could have them ready to go. You could have them in sous vide uh, bags, re-therming. A little bit of a final base here. Uh, you could have them in a big pan, you know, mise en place in advance so that you, if you figure you're going to sell 10 of these a night, they could be ready to go all glazed up and beautiful like that. So we'll let that finish here just a minute. We've got uh, a few more accompaniments to do the plate up and to show versatility here in terms of uh, ability to take out. And then also, just going to wet this down a bit. And also for for you know, dine-in menus. So just get a little bit of a moderately fancy quenelle. There it is. And then we fixed up our vegetable garnish in advance here. Mm. <laughs> we went classic on this one. We've got some broccolini. We even had some fun, you know, we're doing a little bit of a turn veg, bring back some of that sort of French. French bouquetier. And then it'll be just a beautiful. And these, this is something you can also carve, you know, you can, you can put a little bit more, put a little bit more to it for the final presentation. And when you cook it slow, let's say in, in sous vide or in a, in a combi oven, you get that awesome you know, maintenance of that, that pink color. Mm -hmm. And so you've got you know, a, a, a cut that is, in fact, well cooked, braised, or this is essentially braised. And then you can maintain that, that pretty pink that people you know, appreciate in terms of their steak eating experience. You know, of course, you're going to tell them that they're not eating like a grilled steak. But they are eating a lovely piece of of a uh, uh, braised premium uh, braised beef, Canadian beef. And a little garnish there, and that is our our uh, in in house dining option. And then here we're going to go to the takeout style, which you know I would love to eat this uh, at my home, you know, and this can come as a family. You know, set up for two. You got the mashed potatoes, pom puree. We call it pom puree. Sounds fancy. It sounds really fancy. And then we take up, you know, our beautiful red wine reduction sauce. Our little string here. Move that to there for now. And then just a final saucing here for the. As it uh, heads up. You a little hungry, Dwayne? <laughs> well, yes. Yes, I am. And I have options. Am I going to sit at home or am I going to enjoy a, an evening out? Oh, my God. Like, I know what I'm doing. I'm ordering. Oh, my God. That's so good, Chef. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad you, uh, I'm glad you appreciate it from afar. I mean, it's the, uh, it's the beauty of the beef. There's so many options. There's so many cuts to explore. You know, there's there's opportunity to find, um, you know, pricing on 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 cuts right now that you really find, you know, uh, quite unusual in in, in terms of uh, their relationship to other cuts. So so you know, it's really I think the uh, in the interest of the operator, in the interest of the chef, to really speak to their suppliers and and find options, uh, find opportunities. Um, you know, if there's if there's something that's that's holding uh, the operator back from exploring. You know, talk to their, talk to the rep, get some ideas. You know, the, the reps that we've had through here, we've we've shared and showcased uh, a ton of concepts with them. Uh, we are here also to provide um, support through our CanadaBeef.ca uh, website, which which has a ton of recipes also for inspiration. And then our Canadian Beef Center of Excellence also has a uh, a trade website which is uh, specific to. Uh, food service operations um, and retailers too, uh, and that's cdnbeefperforms.ca. So we've built actually like a, a tremendous video collection there. I've mentioned it in episodes past, but uh, you can go and and see a lot of these cuts at work uh, from a chef's perspective, 
how to how to maximize the number of portions from certain cuts, how to maximize the number of applications uh, cross utilization in the, the menu work so they can find different purposes for uh, same cuts. So if you've got to streamline your menus, uh, there's opportunity there to explore a uh, broad spectrum of applications. And that's so, it's so important nowadays, right? And, it, you know, I, I, I think about these shows and I think the things you guys have been doing out here. It's so important that um, through the next, I don't know how long, but definitely for the next four months, educating and just taking a little bit of time to reflect on cost-saving ideas or different ways to use proteins or different cuts is so important. It's going to, it, someone said to me yesterday, that we're in a definitely, it's definitely a penny business this fall and winter. And making all these ideas and additions and educating yourself is going to be critical. It, it definitely will be critical right now. And love these ideas, though. Beautiful. Jay, yeah, you and right. I, Jay, you and I spoke last week quite a bit about uh, the upcoming festive season and uh, gatherings at uh, traditional gatherings within catering and um, type of opportunities, banquet halls, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what and how that will look like this year. I think what Chef Matthew was able to uh, demonstrate with these particular cuts, uh, roast beef may be a bit difficult. Steaks are difficult as done, done, done this levels are different. Transportation, holding at a certain temperature. But as operators are considering other avenues of... Um, of uh, of reach of, of of their guests, a consideration or more so those hosting um, activities that will be happening at home, more intimate yeah. hosting, and that ability of operators to be able to provide uh, from 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 the highest quality uh, meal experience through to an economical meal experience, uh, those. Um, those uh, entities and those individuals who will be hosting at home and being able to provide the, uh, uh, the, the meal experience for that host and that host's guests. And so this is something that I think that uh, operators may want to consider uh, mm -hmm. right now as the season quickly comes upon us and, um, and the opportunity for providing a service um, stress-free during a very stressful time of the year uh, and still allowing smaller gatherings to uh, to come together in more of an intimate uh, location. Yeah, totally agree. Great ideas, and we definitely you gotta gotta do your homework this for this fall and winter. It's very it's gonna be extremely important. It definitely will. Awesome. Well, thanks again, gentlemen. Chef, outstanding ideas. Dwayne, always a pleasure uh, chatting with you and and sharing the the ideas and everything around beef and around Canadian beef and. How beautiful it is. It's beautiful, beautiful product. Uh, it's just all outstanding. Thanks again. And Chef, educating us on these new cuts. Not new cuts, but new cuts to me. Um, and Dwayne, you're good. I, could, I, I don't know how you figured that out. They're all together in a bag. I'm still kind of blown away. But, um, but thanks again, gentlemen. It's just an absolute pleasure. You're Take welcome. Care. The pleasure. Awesome. Well, for everyone else, we're back tomorrow with Luda Foods. They've had a job with them today. And they're working on some great stuff they're going to share with us tomorrow. And then we're back next week. And next week, we also start a late night show at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we've got a lineup there as well. So all the best, gentlemen. Have a great rest of your day. Everyone else, go out there, eat in a restaurant tonight, and support our folks. And uh, we love this industry. So let's go, go and support it. All the best.